know that I'm not supposed to be here. It is a glorious Sunday. However, we do have some breaking news. If you've been following our coverage, President Biden has officially suspended his campaign for the 2024 presidential race. Right now, we are bringing on Congressman Pete Sessions with some reaction uh, from some local East Texas. Uh, can or excuse me, Congressman, thank you so much for joining us today. Let's just go ahead and jump right in. What's your reaction to the news that Biden has suspended his campaign? Well, I'm not surprised over the performances that the president has had that have not been favorable, neither to him nor the party. There is a good bit of, of anxiousness uh, within the party because up and down, there are also candidates for House, United States Congress, and the Senate are all very nervous and all recognize that if the president's on the ballot, uh, he's aged out. And so they've brought on Kamala Harris now. She's had the president's uh, benefit of the president uh, offering her to be responsible for the border and another number of other issues for the last four years. So it looks like that will be their chosen nominee and then she will have to decide who her running mate will be. And do you have any sense from your position in Congress of who that running mate may be? Well, it's going to have to be something that would, a person who would be permissible to them as a national candidate. It cannot be someone from California. The, the uh, constitutional legal requirements do not allow that. So it would be probably someone from New York if they chose, like uh, Bill Clinton did, he chose to have a running mate who was from Tennessee right next to uh, Arkansas. So it's the balance that they believe they can, they can have. And I would envision that it would be probably someone who might be uh, from New York or uh, another stronghold that they've got, but it will not be from California. And so, and it probably will not be another African-American. It will probably have to be someone that is a man as opposed to a woman to balance that out. So it, it dwindles their opportunities. I'm sure that they've figured it out by now. Uh, they've had uh, two or three weeks to do that. And so I think that's what we'll see probably as early as this afternoon. They've got it figured out now. What they want to do is explain to people Here's their whatever they're going to end up calling it, just a dream team. And, uh, of course, Republicans think it's a shipwreck. Now, my next question, U.S. House Speaker Mike Johnson has already said that should a nominee replace President Joe Biden on the top of that Democratic ticket, there could be legal repercussions. I mean, already 14 million Americans have voted for President Joe Biden, and now they're replacing him at the top of the Democratic ticket. What's your reaction to that? Do you see legal repercussions? Do you see legal recourse in the near future? No, no, I do not. And I, I think that they're perfectly entitled to pick the, the people that they want, their ticket. I think that that they do have to follow federal election commission law. They do have to follow the law as it relates to the money that's been accumulated. I think that if Kamala is the person that stays on the ticket, she would have a rightful opportunity to that. If it were not Kamala, then they would have a, a legal problem. But I, I don't, I don't, I'm, I don't want to disagree with the speaker. I just want to say, I don't know enough about what he's thinking, but trust me, uh, that they, they need to pick who they want, not all, us or the law necessarily that's around this. Now, one last question, Congressman Sessions. Do you see the Republican Party pivoting in any way due to President Joe Biden dropping out and naming uh, Vice President Kamala Harris as his potential next choice? Do you see the Republican Party turning to a different recourse when it comes to arguing against that Democratic ticket? Well, certainly the things which we know and understand is, is that the Democrat elected officials, including the vice president, have all been staunchly behind the same policies that Joe Biden has pushed and that do not work. So I don't see a lot of pivoting. I see us probably being aware of what balance they've got. We know it was Delaware and California. Now we're going to have to find out where that next vice president comes from. 
but I think we'll be eager no matter what to take them on because she is exactly where the, the, the policy has been and the results are. Alrighty, Congressman, is there anything I have not yet asked you that you want to let our viewers know before I let you get back? Well, I would just say to your viewers, this is an interesting time in America. And tomorrow, uh, I'm headed to Washington now. Tomorrow we have uh, what is the beginning or opening of, of a hearing with the Secret Service, the Federal Bureau of Investigation. But this uh, attempt on the president's life, this assassination attempt, has a huge number of open questions, including uh, the shorting of stock that did take place uh, on Truth Social. And uh, some, you know, tens of millions of dollars were at hand, and they're trying to explain that away. I think it's very interesting that fe the federal government, and I'm talking about federal law enforcement, that always is Johnny on the spot to explain where they are and what's happening has yet to have a formal discussion with the American people and the media. So these are just different times when there are hundreds of people that have uh, media on them, technology that's able to capture and see things. And then the last part is the picture that I think that we saw of the bullet that was going by the president is an obvious fake to me. You cannot capture a bullet traveling at 1,300 feet per second uh, with normal uh, technology. So we've got to be careful as to where we jump and what we think and say. And that's why I think tomorrow's hearing will be just simply the opening salvo about what this is. But it will be the discussion that needs to take place as to whether there is more to this than just a 20-year-old who seemingly no one knew about. I don't buy that. I think there's far more to it, and we're going to start that process big time tomorrow. Already, once again, Congressman Pete Sessions, thank you so much for joining us today. S safe travels on your way back to Washington. Thank you.